All right. Um, this is a follow up to the two eleven warm up, and also this is from the two eleven in class session um, uh, using the distance formula. Uh, but let's go ahead and turn our attention to the question that everybody's just causing all the controversy, right? And it's just asking us a few questions. And all we have to do is really do what it says. It says form a square on a coordinate grid. And you see I've done that here. And also the second thing that it's asking me to do is write my coordinates <laughs> on a piece of graphic paper, which I've done here. Part two just asks me, what is the perimeter? And that's the add, if you add up all of these units on each side, side one plus side two, side three, and side four, one, two, three, four, five, so that's five, 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 you'll get what the perimeter is. And if you want the area, you just do size squared. It's a square. Each corner makes a square, and you square, that's why they call it squared, of course, right? Is everyone with me? Stay with me. And that's base time height. I don't, you shouldn't be confused with this because when we uh, talked about the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, well, you know that longest side, we call that the diagonal. That actually goes through the square. You can see the triangle. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I just wanted to see what you discovered and I wanted you to discover people discover different things like the area was half of the square or um, that the, di the diagonal, this was the longest side of the triangle, the hypotenuse. Or that sometimes you get a perimeter like five times five is 25, the area. And then let's just say, or seven times or vice versa. Just, I don't want you to confuse area and perimeter. And so, because you need to understand this so we can get into surface area and volume. All right, so I wanna turn my attention to the distance formula, uh, which I plan to. So you can actually, the, the, the in-class activity We basically uh, piggyback off these same skills. Basically just piggyback off these same skills. All right, and what we did was we used We use the coordinate grid, we use this uh, in the activity. So in the activity, everyone uh, can access this map. You don't have to access the map, but if you'd like to, you can just go on here and uh, make a copy. You can just go on there and make a copy. But we all agree that this point here, so one thing uh, that we talked about when we read about the history of why the coordinate grid came about, um, we discovered that the creator set the origin, you know, it set the origin. So we decided to set the origin of Denver right here at that spot. And then, so we need to give these coordinates that we're naming uh, actual coordinate points or order pairs to represent those points. So what we're gonna end up with is like a A, B, C, all right? And that's gonna be here, all right? In Burlington. So if, if, uh, if we drove from the origin, so first thing I had everyone do in class, we had to uh, set the origin, right? And so what did that mean? Well, we had to make, we had to make, um, C 
see if I can stay on the live stream. Also, three. All right, go through the point, and then I wanted one going east and west through the point. Is what I'm trying. Let me see where. where are you? There we go. That's awful, but it's kind of good I did this so you can actually see the line. But if you look at this, if we travel here from the origin, this is zero, zero, right? So if you went out here and made this the new origin. And if we went one unit, two unit, three unit, four units east to Burlington, the question was, what was the distance to meet Tate at Colorado Springs? So what was the distance for me to drive from here to there in units? You don't have to do miles, but we're trying to figure out how many units. So these units on the grid can represent anything that we want them to be, right? It could be longitude, latitude lines, those could be 10,000 miles, 50,000 miles, 50 miles, whatever. But we're just going to use units right now. If it was feet, if it was inches, just so you have a visual. All right, so we can say that this is A, this is B, and this is C, like A squared plus B squared plus C squared, and get the number of units here, right? Because we know side A, we have one, two, three units there, and we have one, two, three, four units there. Right off the bat, I know what type of triangle this is. I mean, literally, and and that's, you know what I'm saying? If, even if I didn't get this activity, put this activity together or know the answer, if that was three, that's four, I already know what this side is if you tell me this is the right triangle. All right, so what other ways can we find out this distance? Well, the first thing you need to do, you need to write, you need to have a set of ordered pairs, you need to have a set of ordered pairs. So this is what I'm going to do. Let me start a, uh, first thing we need to do, we need to write down these uh, coordinates. And all you need really is the distance from here to here for distance formula. And if you're familiar with distance formula, you know, so of course I got to have my grid. Um, if you're familiar with distance formula, you know that distance equals the square root of, and don't get this confused with like how we're doing slope. And these index numbers don't have any values. They just help you represent how you're going to substitute uh, the substitute the numbers in. All right. So those little index numbers don't have any um anything uh they don't have any value other than that all right so you know don't be thinking of like logarithms or reverse exponents or anything like that all right it's just to let you know what the coordinates for the x1 and y1 are those are two order pairs right so we can get go back and get the set of order pairs and we can actually plug it in to the distance formula and actually find the distance from point B to point C. So this would be point A. All right, I should have called this uh, side M. Uh, and this can, well, I like that A squared plus B, B squared. Let's just keep it B. All right, anyway, back to here. So we're at point zero. I mean, I said zero, I'm sorry. We're at point one, two, three, four, zero. So we're in Burlington at point four, zero. And to get to Colorado Springs, we're gonna be at negative one, negative two, negative three. I mean, zero, negative three, X first. So that's zero, negative three, right? because I didn't go any spaces left or right. I just went straight down from the origin. So we want to find the distance between these two points. Well, 
if this was anything else, if this was, if I gave you um, 4X plus five equals X, well, what would you do if I gave you X equals two? You'll plug X in to find what the value of the answer, right? So it's the same thing here. You're basically just gonna plug and play, all right? So uh, we can call this, this can be X1, this can be Y1, this can be X2, and this can be Y2. So let's go ahead, let's say zero minus four squared plus negative three minus zero squared. A lot of people get tripped up on here because they do their steps wrong. And, and what do I mean by that? They do their step wrong. Well, they do this out of order, okay? You can't do this out of order, all right? You gotta do what's in parentheses first and then square. All right, so what? how are we gonna do that? Well, simple. Zero minus four is what? Minus four. Right, and you still got that square plus negative three minus zero is what? Negative three. And you still got that square. So right now, we to get the distance, we just need to get the square root of what four squared. So that'll give you what? It's going to give you a positive number because it's square, right? So four times four is sixteen. All right, and that's gonna be a plus, plus three times three squared. Well, negative three is the same, same situation uh, because anything squared is gonna give you a positive number, right? Because it's times two and that's gonna give you nine. So nine is 16, the distance is the square root of 25. And we all know that the square root of 25 is five because five times five equals 25. Now, if this didn't give you a perfect square, you didn't have to, you could have left it at radical 25. If this didn't, if you couldn't get uh, five, either one of these answers would have been right, all right? So hopefully that was helpful for you. I kind of answer two questions in one. And you can actually check this if you like. You can do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And you'll see that the length of C right here, you'll see that that length is five. Hopefully that was helpful to you. You guys have a great rest of the day, bro.